Hello everyone and welcome back to the EGFC Rocket League. We are here for another matchup. We've got a newcomer to the EGF in this one. Weber State in their very first EGF match going up against Butler. This one should be a fun one. I do agree. The Utah-based university here is uh, going to show us what they could do, right? They, they, they've they come in with a fresh new roster, fresh faces we've never seen before. And let's see what they could bring us because right now we have no idea, right? They are that wild card that we all wish to be once in a while, right? Once in a lifetime. Let's go down to the game. Let's see what they can bring us. Weber State, one of the four teams that joins this Rocket League scene from the Big Sky Conference. Montana was in the Big Sky Conference originally, or in the Western Conference, but they have moved over with some of their newcomers as well. They are in, the newcomers are in the orange, and it is Butler in the blue as this ball finds its way on the orange half. Up in the sky, drop down, but the shot is wide. Munch gathering the corner boost, and kind of in an awkward spot to play that ball. Nova is the one to play it forward for Weaver State. Gets sent on net, and Raf is there. This one will be Raf again, and Raf snipes the corner, beating the defender, and it's Weaver State to strike first. Look at the speed, 167 kilometers an hour, it pinched. Ah, that makes so much more sense now. It pinched in the air, both of them touching it at the same time. It just went the way of Weber. And I guess that's beginner's luck, isn't it? Maybe beginner's it. luck? <laughs> beginner's luck, they will take it either way. Just a lot of speed, like you said, on that shot. Just being able to get up to the ball first and winning that challenge because of it. But Butler trying to get the ball back here and press. Ham, I believe, trying to get around that ball. Got by one, but he is challenged by Nova. Finds its way off the corner once more, and Munch is there to win that challenge. Kai moving forward with it. Nova gets by Kai. Zest is there as well, and the redirect sends it down in the blue half. Awkward dunk down in front. Net is open. Munch actually whiffing on this one. Zest has a chance to shoot, but Kai is there to make the save. And Kai is one of the players to watch on this Butler roster. Last season, he was one of the players that really helped Butler the most. And he sets up Munch for this goal here. It's a tie game. Beautiful play by Kai here. He flicks it over one. Hits it off the back wall before Zest can get to it in time. And Munch is just there to put it off of the floor, into the top of the net. That's wonderful, and we're tied at one. 3.32 left in the game. And also Munch with the creative shot, right? Doesn't quite get the best piece of that, that ball to get a lot of speed on it, but the bounce is harder to track for the last defender there, and it makes oh, it a lot awesome. more difficult. That shot is a close angle, but it is saved away. And Ham, uh, excuse me, punching that one down the field for Munch. It hits the corner oh. of the ceiling. The drop down in front, and Munch is there. They will score. It is Butler now in the lead. Oh, Munch. This is a beautiful play, and it passes down to Enham here. And beautifully done. Nice little pop down. Oh, wow. And they go down one to up one within just a few seconds. And Enham has to feel a little bit robbed, but he did end up shooting it into his teammate who passed it to him either way. Butler happy to have the lead back as we hit the three minute mark remaining in game number one between these two. Enham trying to get that one out of his own side. Zest dropped down underneath. Munch is going to be able to pick up this corner boost, but he's demoed by Zest. Shot by Raf. Kai is there to make the save. Nova recentering. No one there for the side of the Wildcats. And Kai, hard to control this ball off the wall, but he does manage to get the flick over top. Raf trying to buy some time, kicks off the ramp, back and centered, but Zest is there. And back and forth we go as we hit halftime, Kai. It feels like Butler has a lot of control here as Kai on the double tap scores to make it three to one. Bye, Kai, you love those double taps, don't you? Look at the angle he's got to shoot that from. Not much of an angle to look at, despite the fact he still puts it in finds it and puts it through. It is halfway through this game. They're up by two. Kai had a lot of space to work with and it felt like Butler's offense was kind of ramping up even from the start. They've had a lot of possession in here. <laughs> Munch can't get the touch. He had the open net, but no dice there. Another shot coming through off the crossbar and out. Kai has to backtrack. Zest looking mid for Nova. 
has him, wins the challenge. That will go off the backboard. Raf is there! Raf's shot is in! Off the goaltender! And it's a one goal game! Oh man, the defender here, not much he can do in him. He goes up for it, he's progressive about it too, because he does not want to stay and stand still. That's the smart play to do, but he just doesn't read that he... He's not there in time, right? He's just too far away from it. Instead of going towards the ball, he goes away from it and allows Raph to get the shot in as Kai there. That's a beautiful way to start us off and they nearly get back that two goal lead. The fake shot came through in the bump as well. Kai looking for the corner, but Zest denies him. And now Zest moving forward has no boost, but will manage to find a second touch. Munch is there to clean up that backboard play. Kai in transition to punch it downfield, kicks up. Third man, possibly, and Hammond, his teammate double committing there, so a little bit of a miscue. Gives the ball to Raph. Loses it for a moment. Nova kicks it up high. Where's the shot coming from? It's Zest, but he cannot find the net. And you see Weber State, they're, have, they're having a little bit of a tough time generating these quality chances because Butler in transition right now. A lot of space to work with. Nova lobbing that one downfield. It's on net and Ham has to respect it. There's a double commit on the shot and it's saved by Kai once again diving across. That's yeah, so beautiful. That is how you defend. And you said it right. No quality chances or very little of them uh, from, from Weeper. And when they do come, the transition game is great out of Butler. Munch is... gets this one over top and... We were talking about that transition game. It's how they've gotten most of their chances, but also Weaver State, you know, they're one of the things that I've noticed is that they have really struggled in getting a, a lot of time of possession, but that's a huge chance in transition from Raph. The rebound shot munches right there to make the save. Shot down to him. Two players on this one. Kai actually gets bumped by his own teammate. Enham is up. Raph beats him to it. Short time remaining here for Weaver State. Can they get one more to tie this one up? Pinched off the ramp there. Munch to drop it back down. Raph booming clear. Redirect by Nova, but Enham reads it well. Last second chance, and they will not get one. It is Butler to take game one. Oh, man, that is some great uh, great play out of both teams, I would say, right? Of course, it's looking a little bit more towards Butler's side uh, with that amazing 3-2 victory there in game number one. We do see it uh, go, go the way of, of Butler, and that's kind of what we expected, but I don't think we expected this hard of a first match, right? Where it was very back and forth and very strong out of uh, out of Weber. They they showed up. They they really did. They the wild card does show up sometimes. Yeah, and this is one of those cases where it's hard to kind of get a a, a judge of how good a team is coming in because Butler, these are one of these teams that you look at in the EGF and they're they're a possible championship team. They were top four last season. They've had a couple of roster moves since then, but Weber State coming in, you have, you have no idea how to scout this team. There's no real info on them. So Weber State is in this kind of portion of the game where they're trying to figure out who they are as a team and what can work in this specific matchup as we get ready for game number two. Butler's transition game, really a strong point for them in game number one. And their offense, too, just generating a lot of chances overall. Weber State felt like their, their best chances came off of those booming clears, getting it over top of the third man. If they can do that, well, they've got a shot at this series. But for now, it is Butler on the offensive and Nova getting the clear over top of Kai and sending this one into the blue hat. I noticed something very early on last game as, uh, well, the, the initials for for this team is w, uh, uh, WSU. Uh, do you know of any other team that's known as WSU? I, I can think of a couple. Washington State's the first one that comes to mind for me. Are you thinking of Wichita, maybe? <laughs> I'm thinking of Wichita, yeah. So there's th that makes three. That makes three of them that are <laughs> WSU. No, you can't mix yourself up at this point, right? The, it's, it's very difficult uh, already when some have the same initials as others. And now on top of that, you've got some very different at least the S always means the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and Wichita State, too, is one of these teams that's known for their kind of strong defensive play. We'll see if Weber State can live up to that. So far, both teams have been blanked. Nova cutting off that passing play in front. Kai has to win this challenge, and he does. He is able to get back to it as well, beating, I believe, that was Raph. Nova 
Another big booming clear, and Kai has to respect it. He is everywhere on the defensive side for the Bulldogs. Zess might be able to turn on this one, is able to find one touch. Enham gets dunked by Zess as well, but Butler, they've just got a player ready to respond for every single touch. This one off the back wall, and it is saved away. Nova looking for a pass mid, finds his man, but Kai cuts it off, and this is the first real sustained pressure we've seen out of Weaver State. Oh, definitely, and we can see that, especially Raph, right? He's scored their only two goals so far. He nearly missed the hat trick last game, and I mean, he's bringing on the pressure once again, right? His offense seemingly very, very keen on on pretty much the entirety of of this team's offense. So let's see what they can do with with Raph here at the helm. Maybe uh, Nova or his other teammate can help him here as. Munch is up in the air. The ball is up. Can Nova get it out? Yes, he can. And he's going to go over to Ra uh, over to Zest, over to Raph. No, just a little bit too high. And we're halfway through this game. We're still tied at nil. Nil. An opportunity gone by the wayside in transition. That was an open net, and the pass just doesn't quite come through. That one is dangerously off the post. Munch collecting the corner boost. Has to respect Raph's touch here. Kai is there to answer, and Nova also... Able to respond to the call here. Can't get it by Enham, but all of Weaver State is back. Another attempt at a booming clear that Kai cuts off. Drop down pass for Enham that Zest will answer to. Now Kai and Nova racing after this one. Nova gets the touch, but it's off the sidewall. Does manage to find a second, which sets up Raph. Passing play for Zest, just out of the reach for the moment, and is able to cut off one. And a lot of attempts at passing plays here from Weber State, but just slightly off the mark. Just either too far out of reach or not far enough. And Nova now has to backtrack on this one. But Weber State doing a much better job in game two here of possessing the ball. Definitely it feels like a more equal match. And that, that's rare to say when you're up against a, a team like Butler, isn't it? That you're an equal match to Butler is, well, very hard to do. As, uh, especially Kai, the the, the, the big well-known name on that team, is, well, known for a reason, right? He, he's qu quite famous, he, especially on EGF, for, well, the, the, the kind of stuff that he pulls, the great little plays, such as that double tap that we saw early on in Game 1. You were talking about how Zest seemed to be the go-to guy, at least for now, on the offense of Weber State. And that was the case last season for Butler. Kai was that go-to player. If you needed your offense to get going, you looked to Kai. Zest so far, not a whole ton of touches, but here's one dribble over top of one, but Enham is there to cut him off. Nova looking to center, but no one is there. That one almost on net, he'll leave it for Raph. Raph can't get by Kai cleanly, but he does manage to get the dunk over another. Enham. Punching it back down in. Short time remaining here in game number two, and we are still scoreless. Just a small handful of chances both ways. Munch now looking for Enham. Shot is on, but Nova is there to cut it off quickly. In transition now, Nova trying to flick over Kai. Gets blocked, but Zest is there. Air dribble attempt. What's the flip reset? Has got it off the crossbar, the rebound! Raf punched it into the ground. And Weber State should be walking away with a win, but instead we're headed to overtime. Oh no, that is devastating. That is so devastating. No, not like this. Off of the kickoff, this is how they lose. With the goal right in their fingers, in their grasp. All they had to do was put it in, instead it spiked. Oh, this is insult to injury. Oh my goodness, what did we just watch? I, oh, you shocked. can see my hair is disheveled. <laughs> I, I, I went nuts uh, from that. Oh my goodness. I was going to do the same thing, but I've got the headset on it. <laughs> Look, it's that, that is heart-wrenching for Weber State. Not only do you have them in the very last seconds, but you think, okay, it's fine. We're still tied. We're still going to overtime. And I feel like that extra juice of like, okay, we've got them, and then... You have to instantly reset yourself for kickoff. Might have gotten their heads a little bit on that kickoff because all Munch did is punch that one down the field. It happened to be on, and and Raph, the guy who took the shot, ends up having to be that player to make the save, and he just ends up a little bit too far ahead of the ball. It just, just, it's sad to see, huh? He was just a little bit too high on it. It fell down just a little too fast for his liking. Oh, man. 
I hope that he rectifies that, because he nearly got that hat trick in game number one, nearly gets that goal in game number two, and that, that, that must be su such a morale, right? Uh, uh, it's not an unbooster, right? Because they definitely need a morale boost right now, but yeah, they, they, they are not running high on morale right now with the, the last two games, how they've gone. I, I agree, yeah, that, that morale is crippled for the moment, but they have to find a way to regroup here. These games have been very close. It's just Butler making a play when they need to, as this one will get by Munch, and Kai is there again to get this one down the field. Zest is demoed. Enham trying to set up his teammate, but Nova is there. Enham again actually finds the touch as Nova opted not to make a play on it. Raph demoed as he gets the clear. Munch... Can't get an another touch on it. Enham, no touch as well. Zest, won't find the challenge. Neither player finding a, a touch onto that ball. Raph now from the corner, looking for a pass. Munch is there to come and cut him off. And once again, kind of a, a slower start into this game. Both teams kind of respecting that, hey, it is match point. No one wants to be the guy that makes a mistake as the demo comes through, but it is denied. And Munch will have to backtrack on this one. I, I do agree. Both teams are in, in a weird situation, right? Because it could be 2-0 for either team right now, or it could be 1-1, of course, right? And it just so happens that it's 2-0 in favor of Butler at the current moment, and that, that's going to be really, really hard here for Weaver to come back because of that. Let's see if they can, because, I mean, with this slow play, it's really allowing them to get some quality chances on net, and it's allowing them to at least still be in the conversation for the series. Good touch down there by Enham, and Kai is there to pick it up. That's a good pinch off the corner. Well played there. I believe that was Raph getting the clear. Weaver State heading the other way here. Zest air dribble. Kai is there to meet him. Nova, the chip up top. This is going to find the backboard. Not sure Enham has a touch, but the bump from Kai actually ends up getting in the save. I'm not sure if that was planned or not, but either way, Butler will take it. They keep the goose eggs on the board, and Kai starts to head the other way now. Chip forward off the corner. Zest is there, has 30 boost to work with. Wins the second challenge, drop down for Raph. Mid is there, but it's Kai, able to cut off the play once again. He's a defensive monster right now. Awkward play in front for Zest. He gets dunked by Enham, and Butler is on the board. You know, it's crazy to think, right, that Butler is up 2-0 in the series, because if you look at the stats really, really closely, right, they've only scored two goals in the last 10 minutes which is absolutely insane. In fact, there were two minutes and 11 seconds left when they scored their third goal in game one, and then the only other goal that they've scored since was that overtime goal. So this one is such a crucial goal for Butler to get that engine going again because just how good Weber State's has been on their defense. It's just that their offense has been lacking at the current moment, right? Weber also haven't scored a goal in like eight minutes which is incredibly long for, for both teams to go scoreless. It's so rare to see so little goals being scored in such a long period of time. There are few teams that can hold Butler to one goal a game, especially here in the EGF. Zest now, that's a good shot on, off the backboard, but no rebound chance. This one will be kicked off the wall as well. Kai went, but no shot came through. Another player here at Zest, chipping this one up, wants the air dribble, Kai cuts it off. Nova, able to find one touch, but Munch beats him to it. Raph with some space, looking for Nova, but Nova had to backtrack for boost. Now Zest from the corner, off the ceiling, gets a demo onto Kai. That might free up some space here for the pass to Nova with the shot wide and high of the net. Zest over top of another. Can't beat Kai though once he respawns and Nova punching this one back in. Munch is there. The drop down in front off of Munch's car and Zest is able to keep this one in the corner. So Weber State, again, generating chances. Good centering pass for Zest. Can't cut the angle, though, from across the field as we are inside a minute. Weber State cannot catch a break. They definitely can't. They're setting up the amazing play after amazing play, right? And it, it's looking like tit for tat from Butler, where both teams are giving each other nice punches. It's just that they can't finish their blows, right? over at Weaver. That's the biggest problem. It might be nerves at this point because we know how much nerves can get to you, especially on your first game live, right? It's, it should be extremely tough for you to get into the mindset properly. And if you're not in the, in that, in the zone, you're so screwed. 
Weber State, they feel like an offense that's built for, for death by a thousand cuts. The problem is they're going up against an iron curtain right now. That is Kai as short time remaining here. Nova's got to get this one down the field. One on one with Munch. The challenge off to the side. Zest looking for a pass. No. But it's Munch to get the block they need. And Butler will get the 3 0 sweep over the newcomers. That was a ghost touch to finish off the match. Poor Raf phases through the ball. You love to see it. You love to see Rocket League bugs in action. Ah, oh, who doesn't love Rocket League bugs, man? <laughs> oh, man. Poor Weber, man. No goals in two games. Losing one nothing both games. Who can say that? Right? Who can say that they lost to Butler 3 nothing while only allowing five goals? Right and being one one goal games every single game, this should not have been a three zero score line, right? This three zero score line, and the scores that you see, right? You think these were blowouts every single time that Weber weren't able to get quality chances, let alone shots. No, it was the finishing, right? The the finishing move just wasn't there. The 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 the, the setup was there, right? It's it's like you're playing a fighting game and uh, let's say Mortal Kombat. You you get the finish up sign, you just don't know what the combo is. Yeah, no, I, I I agree, and I feel like Kai, uh, once again, is a well-deserved MVP here for Butler. The number of times that he was able to cut off a play, Munch as well, the number of stops he made on defense, and Weber State, you know, this might be the best 3-0 loss I've seen a team take in a hot minute. Usually when you see a 3-0 here, it is a, it's, it's, you know, it's a Brazil after a Brazil after a Brazil, but this game was so close. It was just Butler making the little, you know, plays that gave them the edge here. And I can't wait to see what they bring for the rest of this split. Butler, they advanced to six and three. Weber State, we'll see them next week. They actually get Wichita State, who we mentioned earlier Whoa. next week. But Oh, no, we... <laughs> WSU versus WSU, huh? <laughs> Yeah, that'll be the that'll be the rivalry uh, of of week number 10 for them. So that'll be fun to watch. But we're going to cut to a quick break to see if we can get an interview with one of the Butler players after this. Don't go anywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the EGF. We just saw Butler get the 3-0 sweep over Weber State, and joining us on the line here is Kai. Kai, how's it going? Uh, Pretty good. Pretty good win. 
Yeah, it was a uh, it was a fun match to watch. But, uh, you know, how do you guys feel after this performance? I mean, it was a 3-0 sweep, but every game was just really by one goal. So what's that kind of series like? I don't know. I guess I didn't realize how close it was. We weren't ever really nervous at all. I guess I, I guess except for game two, we kind of, I don't know, we thought we like got away with it a little bit. But games one and three, we at least like felt pretty confident about. So, I mean, if it wasn't a, a 3-0, I mean, I'd, it would have been a 3-1. Uh, do you kind of feel sad looking back at it now? Because this was kind of a close match, right? Game one, you guys kind of ran away with it when it was 3-1. But game two was 0-0 up until overtime, right? With the last yeah. second near heroics that happened there for for Weber. Do you, do you think that this series could have gone to five? And if so, do you think it would have continued being this close the entire time? Uh, no, I don't see it going to five. I think we just like played better overall. They had a pretty good game too, and honestly, I forgot about their uh their their like flip reset play at the end there. But um, <laughs> so I mean, again, it I, it could have gone to four, but I just I think we were playing better the whole way through all right yeah uh, i mean it certainly showed right uh, you guys were able to, to get the 3-0 and I, I gotta ask you know what do you think is the the biggest strength of your team in particular because you've gone through some roster changes between uh last year and this year um yeah i don't know i guess uh, yeah you bring up a good point because like this was a pretty um unexpected change from our from our previous roster but i guess i guess the biggest thing is just our like mental resiliency like we've just done a really good job adapting to to changes and uh just i don't know like playing our game and going into next week how are you guys feeling you feeling all right you feeling good to go uh for this uh for the rest and the continuation of dgf um yeah, I'd, I'd say I'm feeling pretty good. I don't remember exactly like our schedule or who we're playing, but I don't know. If we can continue to play like we did today, and if we keep like practicing, because we've only been able to, we've only teamed together for a few weeks. So, I mean, if we just keep improving on what we're doing now, I, I think we could do pretty well. Yeah, uh, certainly showed today. Uh, while you are here, is there anyone you would like to shout out or thank while you have the mic? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll like first and foremost, um, my teammates, you know, they've done a, they've done a really good job just, um, adjusting and, and fitting in and kind of a, kind of a hectic time with, with some of these roster changes, but, um, yeah, they, they've done a really good job. Um, I'm definitely proud of them. Uh, and, and, and my old teammate too, you know, Astro, he was, he was watching the game today and, you know, even if he's not playing anymore you know he's still providing a lot of support for us so that's that's always appreciated and uh lastly is probably my mom she's uh she's always my biggest fan she's there to watch every game and you know i appreciate and love her for that awesome well thank you so much for joining us guy kai uh congrats on your win this week and we'll see you next week when you play st john's thank you appreciate it and with that, we're going to cut to a short break and get ready for our next matchup of the night. Don't touch that dial now. We're just getting started.